Welcome to the Leaders of Tomorrow show at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com. My name is Michelle Halliday. Our guest today is definitely one of our favorite investment gurus. He is commonly referred to as the Robin Hood of Wall Street, and we are thrilled to be welcoming him back to the show today because he pulls no punches and he is full of fire and fury. Today, we are welcoming Mr. Gregory Manorino. Greg is an active trader within the financial markets. He is the author of several books and the founder of TradersChoice.net. Today, we'll be focusing upon the Fed policy, Washington's pressures upon the Fed, the stock markets, precious metals, and income inequality. Greg, welcome back to the show. How are you today? Great to be here. Thanks for having me. I am doing well. Appreciate it. Oh, yes. We are always thrilled to have you here. And so far, we want to talk about the first half of this year. We've watched 37 out of 38 major asset classes rise in price. They include all-time highs for the world's largest stock markets, six-year highs for gold, and a 200% gain for Bitcoin, many more. Silver is the one out of that 38, which is generally speaking down. From your perspective, is there an opportunity here? The opportunity of a lifetime. I mean, just look <laughs> at the, uh, the silver to gold ratio. It's almost 90 to one. So what does that tell us? And it's just so undervalued. It's not even funny. But I, I think people just don't understand how precious metals are even valued. They, they, they derive value from the derivative. I mean, it's derivative market. It's the deli- derivative market that determines price for the hard asset. It's completely upside down. It's kind of like a derivative uh, setting the price action. Of, let's say Apple stock, Microsoft, it's completely flipped the opposite way. And we know why it's being done like that, but there's, there's no doubt about it. In, in my view, um, based on me studying this around the clock for like, I don't know, a decade longer than that, way longer than that, actually. Um, I, I still feel it's the most undivided asset in the history of the world and people need to be hoarding it. Um, that's just my take. Many experts agree with you. Just recently, just within the past 24 hours, Kitco came out with several experts looking for a 40% rise fairly soon. So this is really exciting for silver. You know, it, it is, but... I am really a long game kind of guy when it comes to the precious metals. And I've been talking about this for a very long time. It's just so simple for me. My perspective is, is this. We understand what the Fed's going to do, what the European Central Bank is going to do, um, other world central banks as well. They have no alternative but to inflate. So that means you simply need to take the opposite side of that trade for the long haul. Uh, bet against the debt, become your own central bank. I've been saying that since day one. That means hold hard assets in this environment. They're going to kill the currencies. That what That's what they're determined to do. Uh, we continue to hear this from world leaders. Uh, the dollar is too strong. President Trump says this every other day or whenever he gets a mic in front of his face, which is every day. Um, you know, and it's not just him. Uh, this is the environment we are in. Unfortunately, um, Moving forward, this is what we can expect, a currency devaluation on an epic scale. Um, the, debt, the, debt, the debt market is unbelievable. In fact, I can't even get the words out here. It's, um, it's the biggest bubble the world has ever seen by exponents. That doesn't mean it's not going to get larger. I do believe it will, the debt bubble, that is. Um, so again, it just puts a very easy, clear perspective on what people should be doing for the long run. Number one, uh, own hard assets, silver, number one, period. That's my view. Number two, look for dollar alternatives, including cryptocurrencies. That's my take. I've been saying this for quite a lot uh, lately. So, um, and get out of the dollar. I mean, they're determined to kill it. They're determined to kill fiat currencies. I don't know why anyone would want to be in these instruments. They're debt units. And um, all of this is just a distortion on an epic scale. The whole thing, the stock markets, what's going on with regard to precious metals. I even think cryptocurrencies are suffering right now. As you know, they're down a little bit today. They've been under a little bit of pressure, but it doesn't phase me at all. I think a lot of this with regard to cryptos is speculation that there's going to be um, some type of regulation put on. We understand there's been an amazing um, calls by Congress to regulate this stuff. So, you know, you're going to see this wavering around, but I still think the trajectory here for all the big cryptos is higher. 
right now uh, as, as people are seeking dollar alternatives. I personally believe they should be in hard assets, but you can't only be in one thing. And I, I want people to understand that you need to be diversified. You have to own things, different types of things. Um, you can't put all your eggs in one basket. You, you'll, if you do that, you'll end up in trouble at one time. And I don't want to see anybody do that. So you should be spread out a little bit. Exactly. Now, Greg, turning now to income inequality, it's a growing topic of discussion. Should there be a free market or should the government address this or actually should it be addressed at all? What do you think of this? Is it a sort of a negative phenomenon or is it a natural one? And should the rich really be taxed to mitigate it, or and should the wealthy be inspired to donate? What's your sp- perspective on how to sort of resolve the situation, if it can be resolved? I think we need to let the free market work. We don't have a free market. Um, it, with, with, with regard to the stock market and our economy, nothing is real, nothing is, it, everything is being managed right now. Uh, world central banks have taken the largest aspect of this market, the debt market, artificially suppressed rates now for over a decade. This has caused massive distortions across the spectrum of asset classes, for which some of which are, are in our face being rigged, like the price action of precious metals. Um, so, I mean, with the, if we would allow the market to work, um, which is not being allowed, especially under this president whatsoever, he wants that market higher at all costs. That means he wants a weaker dollar. He wants negative interest. He wants negative interest rates. Uh, and we already have them in the United States. If you look at the rate of inflation based against what yield, what any bond right now is actually yielding, we have negative rates in the United States. It's insane. Um, but people, they're not supposed to know that. But, um, you know, I don't think we need to, I think if we allow the market to work this the issue with income inequality, whatever that actually is supposed to mean, uh, would, would re- resolve itself. Uh, we're just not allowing the market to work. And that's the biggest thing right now. Um, and it's not just here in the United States. It's, it's a worldwide phenomenon. And um, un- unfortunately, it seems that the cycles of the market have been removed. We used to have boom cycles and bust cycles. Now it's all up, up, up because it's about propping up the stock market. And regardless of what's happening on the ground, uh, it doesn't matter. And I've been explaining to people for the longest time that the gap between what's actually occurring on the ground or in the economy and the stock market is going to continue to get monumentally worse. Um, especially, I mean, we're going to have the ECB, the European Central Bank, um, they're, they're going to fire every last salvo at, at, the mar- at their markets to try to keep them propped up, taking rates deeper into the negative, uh, diluting the euro, and the Fed is going to follow suit. Um, and and we, we are going to get a series um, of, of rate cuts from um, the ECB moving forward and from the Federal Reserve. Um, we're getting one. There's no doubt about it. In my mind, at least, we will get a Fed rate cut at the end of this month, their next FOMC meeting. That's going to be one of multiple that are coming down the line. So if anyone's expecting this to be a one and done, they're completely um, detached from reality because the game is very simple. They want to keep that doorway open for cash to move into the stock market, and that's how they do it. It's very simple. I want to stay with this topic because I do think that President Trump is putting a lot of pressure on the Fed to lower the interest rates. And I really want you to dive into why this is happening. What is the president's perspective? It could not be more simple to me. First of all, when was the last time you heard the president come out and explain how uh, lower rates uh, and a weaker dollar would help the American people or the middle class? Have you heard even one one time? No, you won't hear that out of his mouth. Uh, and most people don't understand that these are very damaging policies to uh, to weaken uh, the the. The, it'll, it'll hurt the middle class by not allowing these people to even have an interest or any account that'll keep up with the rate of inflation. Sure, those with a 401k are going to be happy until they're not. And we've seen this over and over again. I do not believe there is any pressure whatsoever that exists between the President Trump and the Federal Reserve. It's a good cop, bad cop charade that they played on people over and over and over again. Um, And they're both on the same page. The Federal Reserve wants 
to lower rates. I don't care what comes out of their mouths. How do central banks uh, wield power? By issuing debt. Every world central bank is a, issues debt. That's all they do. It's their one product. And the more debt they issue, the stronger they become. Never before in history have world central banks been stronger than they are today. As a matter of fact, I will go as far as to say the Federal Reserve, because it's the central bank of central banks right now, has more power um, than the entire United States military arsenal, including its nuclear arsenal, to uh, unleash havoc on humanity. Uh, they control our lives. They dictate everything because, again, they dictate monetary policy, our method of transaction. The Federal Reserve, every world, every central banker uh, could not be happier. I don't care what's, what comes out of their mouth when they hear that a leader like President Trump wants to lower rates, wants to dilute the dollar because why do they get to issue more of their product? It's like, for example, let's say I'm selling, I don't know, chapstick. All right, that's what I'm doing. And I, I, all of a sudden the world wants more of it. I, get, I gain more power because I've become richer. That's how it works. The central bank's product is debt. The more debt they issue, the stronger they become. And their goal, their end goal, every world central bank has one goal. To, it, and it sounds crazy, but it's world domination. They're going to be the lenders of last resort and the buyers of last resort. Last time we bailed out the banks, 2008, this time, Who's going to bail out the countries that are now absolutely debt slaves to their uh, central bank? That's where we're going here. And I'm very disturbed with President Trump's policies right now with regard to the Federal Reserve because candidate Trump had it right. Who this guy is, I have no idea. The, candidate Trump explained what the Fed was doing to make Obama look good, keeping rates suppressed, trying to prop up the stock market. This is his words. He explained this. Um, he explained that exploding debts and deficits were not sustainable. And that's what we're getting. Record high debt, record high deficits, calls for easy money. I mean, maybe he forgot the script, but this is where we are at now. Uh, his monetary policies are disastrous. And all they're doing is pushing, uh, is inflating these bubbles even bigger than they are, which means the correction to fair value is going to be that much worse at one time. And people outside my window over here, and your window too, wherever that is around you, are going to be walking around like zombies because they have no idea what just happened to them, which is what they, they do. The Federal Reserve, in collusion with whatever, uh, whoever's in the white, pretty white house at the time, and it doesn't matter, they're, they're serial bubble blowers. They blow these bubbles, they deflate these bubbles. When they deflate these bubbles, wealth gets transferred from one group of people to another. It's a very simple content concept. It's been going on since forever, and it's not going to stop now. That's my view. Hmm. So generally speaking, lowering interest rates is not going to stimulate the economy. This is what we're hearing. You know, lowering interest rates is going, to, is going to stimulate the stock market. What is it going to do to the middle class? I mean, sure, like I said, those with the 401k are going to look good. But again, they're, they're determined to kill the dollar. They're determined to lower rates. People are going to be reaching in their pocket deeper uh, to buy things. You mentioned the beginning of this in this video uh, how everything keeps going up in price except silver. Well, that's that's what people can can count on. I mean, I just went food shopping yesterday, literally, and I'm looking at the bill and I went, my God, what is this? There's no inflation. Are you kidding me? Sure, because they take energy and and uh, food out of their calculation, but it's it's totally ridiculous because they say these are temporary. Really? When was the last time you saw the price of anything go down? It doesn't go down. Everything just continues to go up as a distraction. It's just going to make people's lives much harder. Greg, do you see a blow up between the government and the central bank coming? No, they're one in the same. The okay. central, but does like I said, it doesn't. Who controls the money? Well, it's the Federal Reserve, and in our case here, whoever controls the money controls the world. It's that simple. I don't care literally who sits in the pretty white house because the guy in there is not the guy who ran for president just right now. It's not the same guy. Looks like the same guy, maybe. But uh, what, what he said during the campaign, polar opposite of what he's doing now with regard to monetary policy. Uh, he's adopted uh, President Obama's playbook. I mean, to the letter and then some. Uh, it's just getting out of control. So they're one and the same. Uh, the government is in bed with the Fed. The Fed's in bed with the government. The Fed is the government because they govern the money. They control 
monetary policy, everything else is nonsense connected to it, in my view, at least in this environment. And unfortunately, I think it's only going to get worse from here. Looking at where we're sitting right now, if you were the chairman of the Federal Reserve, what would you do to turn this around? If I, if I were the chairman of the Federal Reserve right now, I would cut rates and I would dilute the dollar. I would do exactly what he's planning on doing mm. um, because it makes the central bank stronger. Uh, and that's his organization. So, uh, and that's what President Trump wants him to do. Uh, he believe me, he wants to do it. I don't care what comes out of his mouth. This is what they want to do. They want to dilute that dollar. They want to go negative with regard to interest rates. I mean, Christine Lagarde, who's a, who, who, who has a criminal record. She's a felon. She did not spend one single day in jail, you know, because there's us and then them. The law doesn't apply equally. Uh, she's going to run the European Central Bank. And um, she said publicly that negative rates are good for the global economy. You've got to be kidding me. You can't make it up. You can't make this stuff up if you tried. I really feel like we're in some kind of a distorted reality. It's twisted beyond belief. And that's the way it's going to go moving forward. It's very sad. But people, there's not enough people that understand what's lying underneath all of it. They think this is a real thing. They don't realize it's a show. Uh, the good cop, bad cop, the, the, the Democrat, Republican, the, this whole thing is just a way to keep people polarized, to keep them in, distracted, to keep them in a state of stress so they can't focus on what's really happening. It's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing, but it's been working since time immemorial. This is the divide and conquer strategy that has been used literally since pre-biblical times. And, um, and that's the way it's going to go moving forward. And it, people are just, they're, they're not evolving. People are devolving. They become, I think today, generally, the population is more stupid than they've ever been. Um, and they've been dumbed down on purpose. They literally have. Um, they don't read books. They don't sit down and, and contemplate what's going on around them anymore. It's like they act like drones. They get up in the morning, they go to work, they come home, they sit down, they have dinner, they go to bed. This is their cycle of their life. Um, they don't con they, they wonder where money is going to come from most people. One in four people today are borrowing from their credit cards just to make ends meet. Does that sound like a booming economy to you? Doesn't sound like a booming economy to me. Our economy is in free fall. And the, the, the evidence is everywhere uh, other than the fake U3 numbers that they keep throwing at us with regard to unemployment. We have a money velocity which is stuck at near historic lows. Uh, you cannot have an economic boom or recovery without cash moving through our economy. You will never hear that out of the mouth of the president. He will never talk about money velocity. He will never talk about things like uh, how, how negative rates or lowering rates are going to help the middle class. He will not talk about, because it won't, he won't talk about how a weaker dollar is going to help the middle class. Sure, these things are very positive for corporate America. That's all he cares about right now. I don't care what comes out of his mouth. I don't care what people might believe. I voted for the guy. I'm a, I'm a Republican, but I'm telling you, I'm very disappointed with his monetary policy stance. I voted for him because the candidate guy seemed to have it together. And he was calling out things for what they were. I was like, wow, he sounds like me. I'm going to vote for this guy. You know, that's, that's how he earned my vote. And obviously I was duped like a lot of people were too. Greg, what do you think changed? Do you think from your perspective, um, because I know a lot of people agree with you that he's switched. Um, yeah. Was this something that was planned pre that he was always going to switch? Or from your perspective, did he get in? and then become influenced by someone or something. I think he realized how fake everything was, I think maybe when he got there, uh, or maybe his plan was all along to continue to prop up the market and foster the wealth transfer. Look, I, I don't, people don't seem to understand that the plan in, the real plan has been set in motion for decades, multiple decades, and that is a world takeover by the world central banks, by corporate America. You see any mom and pop stores in your neighborhood? I don't have one. Uh, and that's very sad. When I was growing up, when I was a kid, and I was old as dirt right now, my birthday was just yesterday. <laughs> but, um, you know, when I was a kid, there were mom and pop stores everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and today, gone. Gone with the wind. So um, I'm not surprised about any of this right now. I might have to exit a trade in a second. If you hear a little bell go off, that means I'm, I, I was, I'm actually long SPY. I bought calls um, at the low, it looks like, so I'm doing well. I, I might be exiting a trade. So if you hear a bell, that's what it is. Awesome. We're going to stay right with you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just We're going to ride this curve. For, I'm waiting for another two or three percentage points. And I'm going to exit the trade. 
Right. So uh, I'm sorry, I got sidetracked. No, 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 no. Stay with what you're doing. Um, let's switch now to Bitcoin. You brought it up. Um, yeah. Very interested in your perspective on this because it seems mm -hmm. like it was left for dead and then mm -hmm. came Libra, Venezuela, Turkey, China. Institutional demand is sparking major rally this year. And it looks like its potential is growing every day. Are you a Bitcoin bull? I am a Bitcoin bull, yeah. I'm, I am a, uh, a cryptocurrency bull in this environment. Again, I, I, let me put it this way. I am a dollar bear. I am a major dollar bear in this environment. So that should tell people, I think, where my head is at with regard to dollar alternatives. I've been explaining to people to seek dollar alternatives. Get out of it. You know, don't stay stuck in that one currency. You've got to be nuts. You, we're, we know what they're going to do to it moving forward. Um, all, all of the, the fiat currencies, all of the central bank notes, all of them are about to lose purchasing power moving forward. Again, we're going to get a series of rate cuts. We're going to get um, a dollar devaluation, euro devaluation moving forward. With it. We're going to get deeper, I think, into a currency world, which we already are in. Um, and th that's why I, I'm bullish on, on, on cryptos here. And obviously a screaming bull with regard to uh, precious metals. Yes, indeed. We spoke about silver. What's your perspective on gold right now? own it. Um, if I had to choose gold or silver, I would choose silver. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I also, I own palladium too. I own platinum. I own all of, all of them. And I think it's important. I don't own any copper. Um, it's too bulky to keep around in my view. It's, I, know, I know a lot of people do, but it's, it's, I don't, not that I'm negative. It, I just don't own it. I'm just being open here. So um, we need to, uh, again, I, I just think from my perspective, I can't imagine a more undervalued asset than silver right now. I just think its uses are off the Richter scale. Uh, more uses as technology improves moving forward. Uh, it is real money in my view. It's been real money for thousands of years. No central banker is going to tell me it's not real money. And the more that I hear that, uh, the more I realize that I need to be holding it. It's the truth. And the more attacks I see, um, from Congress and from politicians and from billionaires on cryptocurrency uh, means to me that I need to hold it too. Again, these people do not have our interests in mind. It's their interest in mind. And they're not going to tell you what they're really doing, period. Hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting how negative they were toward cryptocurrencies. You know, uh, everybody, the, right? They the want bankers. People in the dollar. That's it. So you believe all of the, the corporations, which is, it's becoming very clear right now. You know, um, the head of JP Morgan denounced cryptocurrency right oh, up yeah. until the time they announced they had their own. Yeah. So. Oh, he, he, yeah. He beat up crypto since Bitcoin since day one. And he, he called people fools to own it. He called mm -hmm. people idiots, imbeciles, you name it, the whole thing. And he, I mean, he looks like the imbecile when it comes to that. Uh, again, why? Who <laughs> he is? He's the CEO of a major bank. Mm -hmm. So does he want you? He want, where does he want you? He wants us in dollars. It's crazy. Totally nuts. Yeah. Talk about the dollar for me. Um, because everyone's watching this and everyone's hearing how it's going to crash. It's going to go down. But timeline wise, what's your perspective? <laughs> timeline until, until it does. I think people are getting people used to having a weaker dollar. Uh, it's all about the debt market. To me, the dollar is a unit of debt. But what I do is I look at the bond market as a whole. I want to see what the 10-year yield more specifically is doing. Right now, the yield curve is inverted. I think most of us are aware of that. Um, it's, it's At one point, and this is not just me saying this. There's a lot of guys saying this. A lot of guys are a lot bigger and loftier than me explaining that there is a potential for a sell-off, a massive sell-off in the debt market. What would that mean? If bonds sell off, uh, if, and central banks are going to become the buyers of less resort. But at one, at one time, the, the debt market is so big that even they will not be able to continue to support it. So you're going to see a sell-off here at one point in the debt market. You're going to see yield spike. Um, as yield spike, it's going to have the opposite effect on the stock market, for example, as to what we're seeing now. And cash is going to leave the debt market. It's going to leave the stock market. Uh, and all of these bills are going to look for a place to go. But the issue with the dollar, it's pretty simple. At one time, when this occurs, well, what I just said occurs, and it will occur at one point, we're going to get another credit freeze. So what that means is business activity stops. Uh, people go to their banks. 
They cannot withdraw even a single dollar. That was the issue in 2008 that people I don't believe are aware of. It was we had a credit freeze. If they did not introduce quantitative easing, massive capital injections into the market, that would have been it back to the stone age period the end. Um, and that's another uh, thing that we're gonna have to face at one point. We're gonna get another credit freeze. The question is only when. So if, if you put the dollar into that perspective that you will not be able to grab any, what is it really worth? That should be pretty obvious to people in my view. So when this happens, you won't be able to go to the ATM and pull out dollars. No, nothing, everything will stop. Uh, they will have a, that was the issue in 2008 and the meltdown there, there was a credit freeze. Um, but they, they managed to really, uh, they caught it at exactly the right moment with those, those capital injections into the market. If they, they did not have projections, we would have had, the, that would have been it. Stop, period. No, no transactions, nothing. We would all come to a stop um, and it would have been Mad Max. And unfortunately, that's where we're going to go again. So to put the dollar perspective uh, here, understand at one point, you're not going to be able to get any. Uh, of, of those dollars. And I think people that are that do have them at that point, because let's put this into perspective. There exists on this planet 1.7 trillion actual dollars in existence. That's it. The rest of it is not real. It's not on the elemental chart. It's all in digital form. I mean, people can check this out. Go to the Federal Reserve's own website and put currency in circulation. It's 1.7 trillion. That's it. That's only amounts of real tangible in your hand dollars that exist. The rest of it is not real. It's crazy. It's a massive amount of digital money, isn't it? Massive amount. I mean, just look at, let's look at the national debt here. What are we at? $23 trillion right. or so they say, well, guess what? It doesn't even really exist. It's not there. It exists in digital form only. Just like people don't understand the fractional reserve system. You go ahead and you put a thousand dollars into your bank. And then you look at your bank statement, it says you have $1,000 in there. You do not have $1,000 in there. You have $100. The bank lends everything out. That's all that's there. Uh, it's a terrible situation. Again, it's all an illusion. And people have learned to live in the matrix in many ways. It's true. It's just so crazy because when you realize that they really don't have the money, it's just numbers on a screen. That's it's, just a it's numbers on a screen that are not real. It's a sick thing isn't it it's really is. hey i know you're getting out of a certain stack right now can i ask you what it is i know everybody's I'm actually, wondering i'm actually in an, an spy i'm in the etf right now uh i didn't it didn't hit my target so i'm still holding it we'll see uh where we're on this i mean uh so spy i got spy calls right now and uh we'll see where that goes i'm not going to hold the position overnight more than likely i'll get out of it once I get a profit or at the end of the day, one way or the other, I don't like holding positions overnight anymore. Really? Why? The market's too volatile. Um, I used to be pretty much an exclusively a swing trader, meaning I held positions from days to weeks, sometimes longer than that. Um, but now I've become more of a day trader. So uh, I get into these things, pull a profit out. I call it an IPO in profit out. Uh, <laughs> if, profit. if I can do this multiple times a day, well, then I'm looking good. That's pretty much what I'm looking to do. All right. Now, while we've got you here, we know we're headed for something bad. How mm -hmm. can we as individuals, who's going to profit from this, I guess, is, is um, my question. How well, it's always, we it's always the same people. It's always mm -hmm. the one percenters. And that's how this is being set up. The market is in a bubble for a reason. The market is, look, earnings don't matter. PE ratios don't matter. Forward guidance doesn't matter. What matters is what central banks are going to do moving forward. That's how we have. It's a completely managed market right now. And, uh, and they, they've got the market where they want it. Uh, and they will continue to inflate it until, until they're ready to pull the plug. And when they do pull the plug, and it will be of their choice when they decide to do it, um, that we're just going to get, again, the people that do have those 401k plans or investments that only, imagine this, imagine an investment plan that only makes money when stocks go up. Who could create that? Only a banker, right? Me? I don't care which way the market goes. It goes up, I make money. It goes down, I'll make money. Not every trade, but for the most part. I mean, I can bet against the market. I can bet for the market. But people are stuck in like a 401k or something. They only make money when the market goes up. Who came up with that? So it's a setup. So when the market decides to sell off, who is the first people out of the door? Well, it's the smart money, it's the institutional investors, it's the investment banks, 
And then the people call up their, their, their fund manager and say, oh, what should I do? What does their fund manager say? Stay in. Don't worry about it. The market's going to turn around. And that's what they count on. So, again, people are going to go, okay, well, I'm just going to do what my fund manager says. Meanwhile, again, you know, it's this, it always comes down to the same thing. Be first, be smarter, or cheat. Uh, margin call. I urge people to go watch that movie. But that's really the truth. And people, the, the general population, the dumb money, get stuck holding the bag every single time. Does anyone believe this time's going to be any different? Because if you do, you're out there. <laughs> Well, I know you mentioned to me one time, and I want to share it with everybody, that um, the people that call the market and short it at the right point in time oh, that's are right. really going to win. Yeah. And I want to bring that up to everybody. Yeah. Well, that's true. Just like in the movie, The Big Short. And uh, th this is going to be another setup that's, that's coming moving forward. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the movie, The Big Short, the guy, uh, the gentleman, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, Dr. Burry, um, took up a short position against uh, that market. Uh, there actually wasn't even a financial instrument at the time that he could have used. He actually had it built. But long story short is whoever gets on the right side of that this time is going to get more wealthy again in dollars. Uh, and what they're going to do with those dollars, I mean, you know, look, you can't stay in these things. So what I do generally what I've been doing is I allocate money and I've been doing this for years, pull money out of the market, obviously pay my bills, whatever I got to do with it. When I get whatever surplus cash I have, or most of it at least, I allocate into metals. Again, I'm a long game kind of guy. Hopefully I'll live another couple of decades and these things will, will manifest themselves. I don't think it's going to be that long. I really don't know. I don't even think about it. I, I, with regard to these markets, I sit here and I trade the market I have, not the market I'm dreaming about, thinking about, forming at the mouth over, whatever it might be. I trade the market that's in front of me. Uh, with regard to metals, it's a long game. So people can get frustrated. Oh, you know, I bought silver yesterday and it went down to 2%. Uh, good. Be happy because it gives you a buying opportunity down the line because we understand what world central banks and their respective leaders are going to do. This, they are in bed together. And I mean in bed together. And they're going to make sure this is the, that the one percenters continue to be richer at the expense of whatever is left of the middle class. I mean, we don't even have a real middle class anymore. Most members of the middle class today are in debt beyond their eyeballs. And uh, this is not the way the middle class is supposed to be. Uh, it's supposed to be pr a prosperous part of society. But we're greasing the wheels. People in the middle class are greasing the wheels of this monster with their blood and guts. It's a terrible thing to watch. And I sit here and I go... Is everybody nuts? It's really the truth. <laughs> you know what? Where's all of our money, Greg? Because um, we have prospectively a lot of money, physical money out there. But everybody I know carries very little money. Uh, they all use their cards. And if you ask them about cash, they just don't have cash. No, they where's, don't because there's only the 1.7 trillion that exist on earth. Uh -huh. Everything is digital, digital transactions, digital this, digital. People will money, literally will money into existence. For example, let's say I want to go out and I want to go buy a Ferrari. Okay. Uh, chances are I'm going to go out there or someone's going to go out there and buy this car on credit. So where does that cash come from? It's willed into existence. This is what they do. I, I'm willing to sign this thing for cash to be just created out of thin air to be put into this vehicle or this house or, or whatever you want to buy. That's what we do. People that live on credit, that live on debt. I don't, I have no debt. Zero. I refuse to become a debt slave. If I don't, if I can't buy something with cash or whatever it might be, I've, I've paid gold and silver for things in the past and I will continue to do that. I bought a guitar recently and I paid with, paid for it with silver. Physical silver. I asked the guy. I said, you, uh, you a stacker by any chance? He goes, oh, yeah. I said, i tell you what. Instead of giving you X for this, how about I'll give you X amount of ounces of silver for it? I mean, this is what people should do. Start transacting in real freaking money. Get out of their system as much as we possibly can, which is nearly impossible. It's the truth. But that's where we're at here. It's a sick thing. People will money into existence. They think it's real. Oh, I'm going to sign this piece of paper and take out a mortgage on um, uh, another house. Uh, and that money's just there. No, it isn't. That money is at that point created out of thin freaking air. Um, and this is the system that we're in. It's so twisted. It really is. But what are we going to do? Here we are. 
So Greg, give us an update on your trade right now before we go. Uh, still, I'm in SPY calls here. I'm, I'm waiting for another 0 0.0 right now, 0.05%, and then I'll trade out of it. <laughs> Greg, it is always amazing to have you on the show. Um, please tell everyone how they can follow your work. Traderschoice.net, just go to my website. Everything is there. It's all free. Take advantage of it. And uh, I hope I come back soon. I enjoy the show. Yes. Yeah. It is always so fun to have you here. You have the best stuff. Mr. Gregory Manorino, trader, author, founder of the TradersChoice.net. For the leaders of tomorrow's show, I'm Michelle Holliday at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com.